the inspiration for it was to try and develop a strategic plan for the, the entire archdiocese. There's a different thinking in terms of the mission of the church now that everybody is involved in that mission from the very outset because of their baptism. So what we're trying to do is a strategic initiative to allow priests and people together to work out how they're going to actually deliver that mission, how they're going to uh, pass on the faith, how they're going to celebrate the sacraments. It also has to cope in inevitably with the a declining number of priests. We will, will not have as no, the number of priests that we have now in 5, 10 or 15 years time. But we also have parishes that are vibrant, they're alive, so we're trying to keep uh, with building hope, keep those parishes alive because people are very identified with their parish. Uh, they have a love for their parish, their church. So it's not about amalgamating parishes or it's not about closing parishes but it's about trying to cooperate and work in partnership together to share the resources on all levels, both the human level and the material resources. Well, I think in the past, very often in parishes, uh, the investment was in the material side of the parish. We built great churches, we had houses, we had halls, we had community centres. But now we need to invest far more in people. Uh, particularly, I think we need to invest in educating lay people to be able to take up these ministries. For example, funeral ministries. I have one parish here and they have 300 funerals a year. So if we found ourselves in that parish, they would one priest. You can't reduce the whole priestly ministry. That can't be reduced just to celebrating funerals and nothing else. The church has to be missionary. So how does one evangelize uh, people today? So we're going to have to invest more in people like lay catechists, uh, lectors, readers, people in funeral ministry, uh, people in baptismal teams, and create that sense of mission and evangelization. And that's where the effort, I think, is going to have to be today and where we're going to have to plow far more resources than we did in the past. And I suppose, in some sense, we didn't have to do it in the past. The number of people were there, they just kept coming, and we didn't really think in those terms. We weren't in the missionary church in Ireland, uh, certainly when I was a young fella. But that has vastly changed today and is very different, and therefore we need to strategically rethink uh, the mission and how we deploy our human resources and our material resources into the future. When you look at the summary of all the submissions that came back from around 112 or 14 uh, countries, bishops' conferences around the world, there were great similarities. Uh, you know, the same things that we were concerned about, other countries are concerned about. The lack of youth participation, the lack of participation of laity, particularly women in the whole uh, organization of the church. So all of that needs to be ad addressed and brought further. So what we need to do now is some sense to deepen uh, the synodal process. And we use that in the building hope, you know, bringing people with us, uh, talking to people, letting people have their voice, because they're the people on the ground in our parishes. And that synodal, if you like, methodology has to be very much part of the future of the church. What we've asked parishes to do in 2023 is to initiate discussions with the other parishes in the partnerships and see how they can actually assist each other and what synergies they can get, what sharing of resources uh, in terms of their human resources. The parishes remain the same. We're not actually suppressing parishes or collapsing parishes. So it's about partnership, it's about working together, and it's about how we can do that in, in, a, in a strategic way, given the resources that we have. Thank you.